I am John from Cigar Advisor and Famous Smoke Shop and Fan Mail. Well, it's a question that came up on Facebook this time. A post from a guy named Jeff caught my attention. He put a picture of a, a beautiful cigar, Cameroon wrapper, beautiful stick, nice smoke, and Jose Blanco, who I respect a lot, by the way. He, Jose comes along and says, just a fact, if it's not grown in Cameroon, it's not Cameroon, it has to be grown in Africa. Now, far be it for me to disagree with Jose, so I'll say... I maybe 90% agree with him. Jeff's cigar is still Cameroon. It's just a different kind of Cameroon. And that's our topic today, country of origin and what it means when the same kind of wrapper tobacco comes from different places. So this is when you see Ecuador, Connecticut, or Indonesian Sumatra. In the case of Ecuador, Connecticut, the first part, this is what tells you which country the tobacco was grown in. It was grown in Ecuador. The second is the varietal, or the type of seed. So that means it's Connecticut seed. And this little bit of shorthand will tell you about the general flavors that you might find in your cigar because of a thing called terroir. Now, just about everything that grows has terroir. This is the term used to describe how environmental factors can inform the taste of a crop. This is all the unique traits when it's being grown. The soil, the conditions of the air, the water, the farming practices, every little thing that's specific to that habitat, these all go into forming the tobacco's character, which is much easier to say than terroir. So part, I think, of what Jose Blanco is saying is that real Cameroon taste, real Cameroon, and all the nuances that go with it, it's not just how Cameroon leaf tastes in general, but how Cameroon, when grown on its home turf, is the standard. You grow it anywhere else, it starts to taste just a little bit different. Now, this is part of the reason why Nicaraguan tobacco grown in Esteli tastes a little bit different than the tobacco grown in Jalapa. If you think of it this way, if all things are equal, and what I might mean by that is if you plant the exact same type of tobacco, one in Esteli, one in Jalapa, you grow the same seed, fertilize it the same way, you grow the same leaf, you pull it off the plant in the same priming, the same stalk position, there's going to be plenty of similarities, but there will definitely be some noticeable differences too. Wine is a good way to understand this. We use this comparison a lot. So let's take Pinot Noir. Pretty popular, on the lighter bodied end of the reds. Overall, it's kind of raspberry fruity, a little spicy, a little bit of tannin, originated in France. But the grapes are also grown in Oregon, California, South Africa, Australia, Argentina, lots of places. And while all these climates may be great for growing these grapes, you can bet that if the winemaking processes are exactly the same, a Pinot Noir from Sonoma, California is going to have different nuances than a Pinot from France. The spices might be a little bit different, more or less tannin, all because of where it grows. It's still all Pinot Noir, but because of terroir, they're all a little different. So with that in mind, let's look at Connecticut seed tobacco. There's the tobacco that's grown in Connecticut, the stuff under the tents, that's U.S. Connecticut shape. There's also Ecuador, Connecticut. Again, Connecticut seeds, but instead of growing it under a shade tent like they do in the U.S., Ecuador has this persistent cloud cover that serves the same shading purpose. Then there's Connecticut seed grown in Honduras, like you might see on Baccarat. It's also grown in Nicaragua. Nesta Placenci has been growing Connecticut seed under shade cloth in Nicaragua, just like they do in Connecticut. But the soil in Condega, or wherever it is that he's growing, it's very different than the soil in Summers, Connecticut, so they're not all the same even if they do taste a lot alike. So I understand why Senor Blanco is passionate in, in his defense of genuine African-grown Cameroon, because I, I am actually this way with Connecticut. I think a lot of people take liberties just by calling any of those four different Connecticut tobaccos Connecticut shade interchangeably. And I don't think it's right, because the terroir has imparted some subtle differences. U.S. Connecticut shade, the stuff actually grown in and around the Connecticut River Valley, tends to be a little bit lighter in color, the leaf is thin, it's silky, it tastes kind of mellow, and to me, a little bit bittersweet. It has long been considered to be the most luxurious wrapper. It also happens to be the most expensive wrapper a blender can use. Now, that's being replaced in some cases with Ecuador, Connecticut, which has many of the same qualities. It is Connecticut tobacco, but the leaf from Ecuador is thicker, and it ferments darker. It has a more noticeable aroma. It's slightly richer in flavor. That Nicaraguan shade-grown Connecticut, that's got some zest to it, too, depending on what priming the blender uses. Now, there's nothing wrong with the Connecticut coming from Ecuador, or from anywhere else for that matter, but it's important to know what you're buying and smoking. So why do I bring all this up? Well, for one thing, it's because Connecticut seed wrapper is still the most popular wrapper choice among premium cigar smokers. Anyway, is this all pretty nitpicky? 
Yeah, but if you call it Connecticut shade, I think it really should be coming from Connecticut. That's me. And one of the reasons why I take such exception to this is because I used to live in western Massachusetts, right on the edge of the valley. And there was tobacco literally growing 10 minutes down the road from my house. I actually remember driving. There was a, a back way you could go to take to get to Bradley International Airport just outside Hartford. And you drive through all these shade fields and all these broadleaf fields, and the view was stunning. And I was up there visiting again about five years ago, and I was disappointed to see that there was only one farm left that was growing shade wrapper. As of 2018, I don't think anyone had planted Connecticut shade. None. And half of those farms I used to drive past, now I hear a lot of them, uh, the, a lot of the land is being sold off for housing developments and business parks. And that's really disappointing to me because I know it's an economic hit to Connecticut farmers and their surrounding communities, but it's also a hit to 250 years worth of American cigar history. And it's hard to say if we're gonna get that back. Actually, I recommend you Google the Connecticut Valley Tobacco Museum if you wanna learn some really cool stuff about it. So yeah, a bit of a beef here today, but. It's worth some extra research to know what you're getting in your cigar. It's also going to help you explore some similar cigars you might like too. If you like this topic, like this video, and be sure to subscribe and get notified below so you don't miss out on our next Cigar Advisor video. Thanks for watching.